What's good? What's good? What's good, family? You hear me? What's good? <laughs> Listen, shout out to the Wall Street Trapper, man. That's probably the realest US stock market channel out there. But, you know, we're over the Atlantic. We're on the UK side right now. It's Tuesday. I'm using the Trading 212 app. That can only mean one thing. It's Trading 21 Tuesday. And today we're going to talk a bit more about pies. You feel me? Cherry pie, pumpkin pie, Mississippi mud pie. Listen, I'm not just going to be naming pies every single episode. I promise you. I promise you. But, you know, I made a video last week talking about the pies feature and functionality. It is called you know, the most important drip or something along those lines you'll ever buy. And listen, that video was more geared and focused around the functionality of Pies, how it works, um, how to use it, and obviously then to how to get the best out of it. This video in this portfolio update, I'm going to talk a little bit more about my investment philosophy, my investment strategy, the Pies that I've created and the ones I might create in the future and my investment objectives around those specific pies and the stocks that's going into those pies and i really want to kind of show you guys a difference in terms of my approach versus some other popular youtubers approaches when it comes to pies and it's not to say that mine is right or theirs is wrong it's just to say that this is a different way and a different potential way to approach it and some of you guys might find value in approaching it in such a way so if you want to know all of that plus more please like comment subscribe help the channel get to 7k subscribers follow on instagram and twitter at infant investors and if you're wondering what app i'm using trading 212 link will be in the description and the pinned comment sign up deposit one pound you will get a free share of up to a hundred pounds and remember tomorrow i will be starting the competition of my 500 pound giveaway you and four friends could win a hundred pounds simply by subscribing to the channel following us on socials and obviously tagging your friends so that competition is going to be launched tomorrow i'll put a video up tomorrow just explaining the competition a very very quick vid and get sharing man and obviously you know if we hit 10,000 subscribers um during the month of july then obviously you know you guys will win 500 pounds but yeah if i do a very quick portfolio update before we get into the whole pies topic you can see my balance is 414 um in my investment portfolio is 314 and obviously i'm up 1.31 note two percent um 4.09 4 pounds 09 and listen all of these shares you see here not one of these shares have i put my own money towards or bought this these are all free shares so listen the free share situation is real get signing up if you are new and you'll definitely get a free share but yeah amd always making dough astrazeneca one share national grid i got six shares progress software one share royal dutch shell one share incidentally this shell stock is the only one in the red but you know obviously the situation with oil right now has been a bit uh been a bit difficult for some time um and under armor 11 shares they'd like to give me the under armor shares um, probably because it's under 10 pounds but um it's all good man it's free money man i can't complain about that normally i sell my free shares and then invest it into stocks that i personally want to buy that's typically my approach with free trade on some occasions not all occasions um but um with this one so at the moment i'm just leaving it because the portfolio is not where um I, I still haven't probably figured out the use of my portfolio apart from the pie situation but in terms of the original the normal stocks i still haven't figured out how much i can contribute what i'm going to invest in and that type of thing yeah how i'm going to use this portfolio so right now i'm just leaving it for the time being but yeah that's the quick portfolio update but what i really wanted to talk to you about today is pies and <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me, specifically how I'm approaching pies and what stocks I've got and, you know, the types of pies that I've got and how I'm basically thinking about it. So as I alluded to earlier, there's other channels on YouTube that use, you know, M1 Finance. And a lot of the time when you see their pies and the way that they've constructed their pies, it's in a very similar way um, and it's in a very specific way. And I want to be crystal clear out of the bat. I fully respect these YouTubers. I watch them, subscribe to them, not to critique, but to understand and to learn because I feel that a lot of the information they give out is genuinely good information. Some things you might not agree with, but I think on the whole, their, their approach is good. So this is not about saying that they're wrong and I'm right. This is just saying that there's a different perspective on achieving potentially the same goal which is about being wealthy in the future and being financially free now a lot of the things that i've noticed with the way that they construct their pies is they typically construct their pies by sector 
So what you'll find is that you might have a financial pie or a technology pie or a real estate pie. Now, um, me personally, if I give you my personal opinion on that, I don't agree with that approach. I personally see no value in that approach. Um, and the reasons why I see no value in that approach is what I feel that they're trying to understand from that is saying, I want to see how my real estate investments are doing versus my financial investments. Or I want to see how my financial investments are doing versus my pharmaceutical investments. And to be honest, all you're really doing is constructing your pies in a way to analyze your portfolio performance. But I don't think that's really you're not constructing your pies in a way to generate the best performance. Ultimately, it, your portfolio is your portfolio, irrespective of what sector they're from. And so by cutting it up by sector, I just see it as an, a way to basically get more analysis of the performance of each sector. I don't see it as, you know, adding any more value to how your investment objective is going to be and how you're going to uh, Im improve, you know, your your wealth over the long term is, is, my, is my basic theory on that. And, you know, you can use loads of portfolio analysis tool, analysis tools, sorry, that basically tell you by sector, this is what you're doing and this is how diversified you are, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. The benefit of pies to me personally and the way that I want to see it and the way that I'm going to approach it is looking at pies as my own fund or my own ETF. And what I mean by that specifically is that typically when you have a mutual fund or when you have some form of investment fund as a fund manager, you typically even see their picture or their name on the fact sheet and that fund manager has an objective and his objective is to invest in xyz in order to generate a certain amount of return for his shareholders that's the way i want to kind of approach my specific funds is looking at it like an etf which is going to be a collection of stocks that might be a cross sector however they share a common goal or a common objective and if that objective or that criteria is met i don't really care whether it's a financial stock i don't care whether it's a healthcare stock or whether it's a tech stock i need to see the shared common characteristic across all of those stocks in order to basically hit the investment objective that i'm potentially trying to make let me give you an example of the ets before i get into my specific pie so at the moment right now i'm on the iShares msci world small cap etf ticker symbol wsml now if you go to um, wsml on the iShares website what you find which i really love their website it basically tells you why and why sml um, so what is it that they're doing and what their investment objective so in this example it says it's a diversified exposure to small cap stocks direct investment in a range of global small cap companies access to small cap diversified stocks across sector and region so it's not just about tech stocks or financial stocks or healthcare stocks their approach their common characteristic is small cap and that small cap can be by any sector in any region and it's direct exposure and when they talk about their investment objective what they say is this fund seeks to track the performance of small capitalization companies across developed markets globally that's the whole purpose of this specific fund if i search for you know another fund that you'll see here like for example, you've got this fund, iShares MSCI EM Islamic Fund, ticker symbol ISDE. When you go to iShares website for this one, again, diversified emerging markets exposure, direct investment in emerging markets companies that comply with Sharia investment principles, emerging markets exposure. This fund seeks to track the performance of an index composed of companies from emerging markets countries and which comply with Sharia investment principles there's nothing about tech stocks there's nothing about finance stocks there's nothing about healthcare stocks the common theme for this specific fund is obviously sharia companies or sharia investment companies that comply with sharia investment principles and for me that's what i want to approach with my pies and my funds i want to look at them as a fund that has a specific objective in mind and so the stocks that i put into that specific fund share those similar characteristics irrespective of the sector so the first pie we've got here is the certi fund the certi fund the certified fund now listen because i'm an exceptionally sad sad lame corny individual like i i name my funds you know based on 
on the objective and just what I think is cool, even though it's very, very corny. So the CERTI fund basically stands for the Curtis Economic Relief and Treasury Investment Fund, yeah? The objective of this CERTI fund is to invest into global high growth opportunities that gives a brother some economic relief. No, I'm joking. But no, the purpose of this fund is about global high growth opportunities that actually provide me a lot of economic um, benefits in the future and by that I mean it probably allows me to grow my wealth retire earlier whatever that might mean so I ain't got to work for too much longer effectively now I'm going to probably tidy up the objective but you get the whole point of that now when you click into the fund and I'm going to explain to you how I feel I've executed against that when you look at the holdings, you've got stocks at the moment. And again, I'm not invested into the fund yet. One of the reasons why is because I feel like I haven't done enough analysis. A week isn't enough. I know I do these videos on a weekly basis, but I think I still need about two, three more weeks of analysis before I find my, you know, the balance that I'm, I'm kind of looking for. But at the moment, the first draft, the first iteration, the MVP, if you will, is I've got stocks like Neo. Amazon, Tesla, Fastly, Nvidia, Adobe, Square, The Trade Desk and Etsy. That's currently the composition of this specific fund and the pretty much at the moment is an equal allocation between um, those stocks um, and when you look at the plan my deposit amount that I'm thinking is about £300 on a monthly basis and what that basically looks like is after investing 10000 over a three-year period I will make hopefully 35000 and that's obviously based off the previous five-year return some of these stocks haven't been operating for three years for five years uh, but obviously it's accumulated in that way that's basically a 68.21 percent return on an annual basis of me putting 300 pounds in a month and obviously getting you know 30k at the end of three years now the the pie or the fund the 30 fund is going to stay there for the rest of my life but what I'm probably going to be doing is finding opportunities or different businesses that fit within this criteria of high growth um, and a few other characteristics that I've looked at with these specific stocks um, and I'm going to explain those characteristics as well so I won't forget to explain those but just to give you an overview by if a new stock comes into the market or maybe it already exists on the market and I've done my research and it actually fits within, you know, a specific criteria, then obviously they it might get added to this portfolio or to this specific pie. Um, it might mean another stock might disappear from the pie. So the pie will be ongoing. It's not necessarily saying that these are the holdings that will stay there forever. But at the moment, these are the holdings that are fitting, you know, this specific kind of, you know, criteria for me. Now, there's some other stocks that fit this criteria however I wasn't allowed to put them into the specific pie so examples of stocks that I wanted to add was um, NXP semiconductors um, Splunk I wanted to add into this pie service now I wanted to add into this pie however I wasn't allowed or permitted to do so um, because they um, they they're currently not available within the pies feature but some of the other characteristics that I looked at was their last one year three year and five year performance which was um, pretty important for me to kind of understand um, how they've performed historically and how I potentially might expect them to perform into the future I looked at their future growth prospects um, so based off a certain number of analysts and I think my, my benchmark or my minimum analyst amount was about 25 analysts what was the average future growth of these stocks um, and they had to be above 50 um, I think the only one that's below it no 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 they had to be yeah they had to be I think above 40 I think um, and you know that that you know all of these stocks comply with that i looked on return on equity in terms of the expectation so this is future return on equity not their current return on equity um, and what their expectation is to manage um you know our, our investments versus their assets um, and how effectively they're going to to manage that capital um and that and then i looked at some other features as well um in terms of you know, like their debt to equity ratio um and just other characteristics like um earnings and ratios now some of them in those instances don't all share the same common characteristics but the primary ones was the performance um obviously their future growth prospects the number of analysts what they actually do as a business and obviously their future return on equity that's basically forecasted so that kind of helped me frame what i wanted to basically put in to this specific 
pie. The next pie I'm going to talk about, I've called it the kiddies pie, but obviously there was another name for it. But um, the the name, I don't think I could have fit actually into the into the feature. I don't think it allowed me to um, put the whole name, but it was basically the future leaders pie. Corny as well, but my whole purpose of this pie is about my unborn kids. They're yet to be born. And you know what? I, I received a message which like, why would you invest or save for kids that you don't have? And I and I and I want to talk about that because for some of you, those of you that know me or don't know me, I used to work in banking for about five years and I've seen so many people manage their finances in so many different ways. And I try to emulate the ways that I saw successful. And there are people out there that save for their children before their children are born um, as a small amount. And obviously by the time their children is 18, they give their children that money and that child can effectively use that for university degree or they can use it to buy a house, etc., etc. So for me, I emulated and wanted to take that approach. Now, you know, it's completely up to you whether you want to save for kids. Some of you might not want to have kids, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I don't believe there's anything wrong with you know saving for them, even if it's a small amount for the future, because ultimately, with compounding um, and with that effect over the super long term. When they hit their 18th birthday and I'm ready to write them that check, then hopefully the amount and the value should be extremely beneficial for them. So at the moment, the objective of the Kiddies Fund or the Future Leaders Fund, as I like to call it, is basically investing in stable companies and stable businesses that have a blend of dividend and a blend of growth that I believe is still going to be here over the next 18 years. So at the moment, the stocks that's in there, and again, this is not necessarily the final list, but this is the, the first draft list is Visa, Walmart, Microsoft, Target and Apple. Um, when you look at the historic return for Visa, Visa is a, is a stock that pays a very, very small dividend. So I, I don't, it's a dividend stock per se, but I think you'll make so much more money in 101 other stocks from a dividend perspective. Um, however, when you look at it from a growth perspective over the long term, it's done financially, like fantastically well. And I think it's going to still be there. Like Visa's been there since before I knew anything about finances. And I think it will still be there in 18 years. I can't see there being that much of a new competitor for Visa and MasterCard. And if there is, they're probably either going to buy it or find a way to partner with them um, over the next 18 years. Now, obviously, I'm proper speculating. You don't know this, but this is my theory. When I look at Walmart, obviously the Walmart, the Wharton family, you know, what the fifth richest family in the world, Walmart, you know, are doing a lot in the tech space now um trying to partner with shopify compete with amazon you know they get 120 million monthly um, purchases just in their online markets alone not even including their retail stores um and they're one of the biggest threats to amazon as well um but i think that even regardless they will continue to be here over the long term and in the future microsoft again i think will continue to be here target for me if you look at their historic performance has been sig quite significantly good um and again they're doing a lot of things in the tech space and apple i think is still going to be here now again there's a lot more stocks to potentially add to this but um just through the time that i've had these are the first ones that kind of emerged and so i'm looking at putting roughly a hundred pound a month into it so nothing like crazy um but when you look at it obviously i'm looking at it over an 18 year period now obviously that's suggesting that i have a child that's born today which isn't the case I just I don't know about it but there ain't no child to my knowledge that's been born today off my bloodline you feel me so it could obviously be 20 years 21 years like 19 years depending obviously when I have our child I'll adjust it accordingly but if we just go on the simple premise of an 18 year time span then that's me doing 100 pound a month for 18 years that's me investing 21,000 pounds over an 18 year period and the potential of my child when they when they hit 18 to have you know a quarter of a million pounds to their name um which for me even if i achieve half of this or even achieve a quarter of this if i achieve a quarter of this then do you know what i mean i'm still giving my child what 60,000 to their name do you know what i mean or 65,000 to their name so that for me is i didn't have 65,000 when i turned 18 i'm sure many of you didn't have 65,000 when you turned 18 so even if i'm completely wrong and maybe i need to tweak the stocks etc cetera, etc cetera, i think the overall goal in the long term will significantly benefit you know my children in the long term and that's the kind of approach and philosophy that I want to take with this specific pie is looking at businesses that are stable companies that I think is going to be here over the long term that provide either dividends or growth opportunity um, that I can reinvest into this pie 
and you know by the time that my child is 18 maybe they will be you know have you know a quarter mil to their name or a couple hundred thousand to their name um, and that means that you know they can pay for their university they can buy a property if they want to buy they can start a business if they want to start a business they don't have to be employed they don't have to do things they don't want to do they can do things that they maybe want to do um, which is the whole purpose of this specific fund so that's the approach that I'm taking for that one the last pie that I've thought about and that I've created is deep PMO no it doesn't mean don't piss me off it means the development of premium monetary opportunities listen um listen I, I don't think I'm green giant the way that I'm coming up with all this corn but listen there's a philosophy there's a there's a meaning behind a lot of this corniness and the whole purpose of this specific pie for me is about you know my high risk high reward um, portion so a lot of this is going to be speculative investments that's why I call it premium monetary opportunities but if they pay off then it will pay off big time for me with obviously a lot smaller of a return um, now at the moment the current holders I've put in there again you can see Neo you can see Cloudflare you can see Virgin Galactic by no means this is the final amount and again this is the reason why I haven't invested but there will be a lot more stocks in here what I'm thinking of probably approaching this pie is mainly IPOs that I believe in so obviously you know an IPO for those of you that know don't know is an initial public offering is when a private company becomes public um, and obviously now um, public retail investors like us can now invest and buy shares in those companies now when you look at historic IPO performances for a lot of you know some of the major stocks their performances are staggering look at Tesla as an, as an example 10 years ago Tesla IPO'd it IPO'd at $17 a share and now it's $983, right? That's a 5,200% return, which is obviously a ridiculous amount of a return um, in a 10 year period. If you look at Amazon, if you invested $100 when Amazon IPO'd back in 1997, that $100, just one single $100 investment would be worth $126,000 now. Now, obviously, you know, there's stock splits and there's, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff, which um, introduction of new shares into the market, acquisition of shares, obviously there's a lot of things that happened during that period but just from a pure figure perspective that's one thing to look at if you look at Facebook and Google about a thousand dollar investment would would yield about five thousand dollars now from the time that they've IPO'd if you look at Microsoft if you invested a thousand dollars into Microsoft in 1986 it would be worth 1.6 million today so what I'm basically thinking here is that there's going to be a lot of stocks that might IPO whether it's Uber whether it's Lyft whether it's Airbnb or whether it's other stocks in the future that when they come onto the market everyone's going to be like this is the next hot stock this is the next biggest thing and if I also equally believe in that sentiment and that theory my approach is basically put this IPO into this pie or put this you know speculative stock into this pie put this pie on a hundred pound a month and basically see what happens so when we look at the investment plan for this again you can see it's a hundred pound a month i've just basically put a 10-year period similarly you know it will go on for as long as it needs to go on for um, but i've just put as a 10-year period but what you can see is that this pie roughly will give me an annual return of 50 percent if i put a hundred pound on a monthly basis and sorry well i mean regardless of what i put on a monthly basis it will give me an annual return of 50.32 percent um, and you can see that over 10 years if I invest 12,000 pounds I could potentially can have 400,000 pounds as a return now again it's all based off past performance it is a bit hypothetical that's currently the only metric that trading 212 can go on at the moment but I think it is worth looking at it in that way in the sense that if, if a stock IPOs and if you look at some of these historic performances and try and find the mean and the average between them you are seeing a staggering level of return and actually 50% return over 10 years a 500 percent return basically equals the google and amazon and facebook stat which i mentioned which is a thousand pounds for five thousand return here me investing twelve thousand to get four hundred and seven thousand potentially I, I take that risk do you know what i mean i would take that risk over the long term and again i might get two hundred thousand i might get one hundred thousand but either so if i get a hundred thousand from a ten thousand pound investment then I effectively have you know x10 my money over the long term so this is the premium the development of premium monetary opportunities this is the purpose of this specific pie is to find those high growth speculative um, options 
but to not have to put that much money into it. I mean, if you look across the, f the three pies, at the moment, you can see it's a 500 pounds in total. It's 100 pounds into this pie, 100 pounds into the Future Leaders Fund, and 300 pounds into the Certi Fund. And, you know, it's not me putting 1,000 pounds, 2,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds in on a monthly basis. This is me putting 100 pounds away, just tucking it in, seeing, like, you know, taking it out of my... You know, I spend more on pasta in a month, you feel me? So taking it out of my pasta expenditure and just putting it into this pie and hoping that over the long term that these actually yield, you know, a significant return for me. So, yeah, that's what I wanted to talk to you about today. You know, as I mentioned earlier on, a lot of the construct or the stocks that's going to construct a lot of these pies might be subject to change. But these are the kind of the initial ones that feel right for me. Probably the the way I actually allocate, you know, the, the, the holdings and the target state between them. I think that's definitely going to change. I've kind of kept it a little bit vanilla for now was to keep it simple but that's my approach with pies my pie approach is not just to say this is my real estate pie this is my healthcare pie this is my um, tech pie this is my housing pie this is my banking pie this is really to say this is my fund this is the objective of this fund this is the the, the vision and the criteria of this fund i want to find stocks across the whole wide world that basically share those characteristics that complement this fund and then I obviously want to put it into the fund and obviously see what happens and that's the way that I'm going to personally approach pie so you know hopefully touch wood I'm not going to contradict myself in the future but what you're not going to see is all of a sudden a tech pie a financial pie because I I just don't see no value in taking that approach and again I'm not trying to criticize anyone for doing that if you feel that's the way you want to pattern your situation up then you know by all means as long as we're getting this money I don't really care what you do I just want you guys to just be getting your money how you want to get your money and and investing and preparing for your future but me personally this is the way i kind of want to approach it is to just really think about it as a fund um, that i manage for a specific objective and obviously stick with that objective over the long term and you know see what happens but yeah hopefully you found this video useful um, it's probably longer than i expected it to be but i wanted to kind of at least be a bit more substantive with the information that i give you around my approach to pies and then get in the comments man do you feel like my certi fund my dpmo fund my future leaders fund is a, just a joke it makes no sense am i talking at my ass which you know i mean i can't knock you if you feel that way um but you know i might disagree slightly but if you agree with the approach if you disagree with the approach if you've got any other questions please get in the comments and i'll obviously you know try and respond to the best of my ability but yeah that's the portfolio update for today um hopefully next week i would have properly invested in certain stocks as i mentioned there were certain stocks that met my criteria for pies that i could not put into a pie trading to just won't allow you to put certain stocks into a pie i haven't really uncovered the reason for that yet so i will try and do some digging but things like splunk or things like the trade desk not the trade desk sorry um i think it was service now um and a few other ones i want those stocks so maybe next week you will see that i will have certain investments in those stocks just for the long term um sitting outside of the whole pie situation but yeah hopefully you found this video useful like comment subscribe remember there's the 500 pound giveaway for the month of july launching tomorrow so get following on instagram get following on twitter um and obviously remember that like, you can start tagging your friends from tomorrow and when they subscribe you can all be given a chance to win 100 pounds hope you had a good start to the week or midweek and you know i'll catch you next time with another investment video take care guys peace